Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I feel a little bit guilty to make a presentation when everyone is starving. <clears throat> this work is done um, in collaboration with my advisor, Professor Jian He. The uh, title of my work uh, is Freebie. It's a cross-technology communication via free side channel. The outline is as follows, where we start with background and motivation. Um, today, wireless is virtually everywhere. Um, for instance, Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, and Zigbee. And their popularity grows continuously uh, with 1.5 billion Wi-Fi's and 70 million Zigbee's and 3 billion Bluetooth uh, devices newly deployed last year. This highly coexisting environment causes issues as well as offers um, opportunity. Where the issue would be the cross interference due to incompatible file Mac between wireless technologies. Where the bright side would be new application um, with uh, information sharing among technologies. Where Wi Fi has um, access to internet, uh, has location information, where Bluetooth has personal health info and Zigbee has monitoring information. So our aim is to address this, this issue as well as explore opportunity with uh, cross communication between wireless, communication, wireless technologies. So is there an ex existing solution enabling cro communication between wireless technologies? Traditionally, um, this is done by using multi-radio gateways. However, this approach suffers from several issues, including extra hardware cost, which is about $150 off the Amazon right now, and causes um, control traffic overhead as well as deployment complexity. Freebie allows coexisting wireless technology to directly to talk to each other, um, thereby addressing all these issues. Direct communication between wireless technologies allows to achieve spectrum efficiency with the explicit channel access coordination among wireless technologies. This essentially um, extends local channel access mechanisms globally or across wireless technologies such as global NAV, global RTS-CTS, and global TDMA. Another use case of freebie is for cost efficiency in smart homes. Suppose there is a smart home equipped with uh, Zigbee smart home devices as well as Wi-Fi AP. When the owner is outside home, his smartphone is not associated to the Wi-Fi AP. This information can be directly brought, bro broadcast from Wi-Fi AP to Zigbee nodes, Zigbee enabled um, smart, smart devices to operate them in, in uh, away mode, such as lowering temperature of the house. As soon as he comes home, his smartphone is associated and this information can also be broadcast to turn them into home, mo home mode. This eliminates the need for the gateway, um, thus we save money. Freebie can also be used for energy efficiency mobile phones. When we consider the state of our, our uh, work on um, Wake on WLAN introduced in Mobicom 10, where they use Zigbee module in SD card, which is inserted into a mobile phone to serve as a secondary radio. So Wi-Fi interface is turned off, and Zigbee module t wakes up the Wi-Fi interface when it detects any Wi-Fi APs around. However, urban areas are usually overfilled with Wi-Fi wi wi these days, where most of them are private or secure, so we, we do not have access to it. So it's still a waste of energy to wake up for um, when there is inaccessible wi private Wi-Fi APs are around. So in order to improve this, with the help of Freebie, we propose a wake on selective WLAN, where we keep the Wi-Fi interface off for private APs. We um, turn on Wi-Fi interface uh, only when open APs are nearby to save further en energy further. Moving on to design of Freebie, we start with the operation requirement. Sender side should support beacon op operations, which is common in, common in all three technologies. And receiver, you should have RF chip, of course, uh, for RS, RS sampling, which is also common in all the technologies. And there must be frequency overlap between sender and receiver, where it's common to Wi-Fi and Zigbee. And for Bluetooth, it's only partially true because of the frequency hopping up mechanism. Due to this reason, Freebie allows bidirectional communication between Wi-Fi and Zigbee and unidirectional communication from Bluetooth to Wi-Fi entity. 
The key features of FreeB includes technology independence, and it's free and transparent because it established side channel with using mandatory beacons. And there's, hence, there's no impact to the legacy traffic. And it's very easy to deploy without any hardware or file modification. And it's mainly for delivering control information with this limited throughput of up to 1.4 gigabps, kbps. Sorry. This is the architecture of FreeB. Uh, note that the sender and the receiver are under different wireless technologies. Here we, here we give uh, Wi-Fi and ZigBee as an example. Below two, um, uh, bottom two components are from commodity hardware, off-the-shelf hardware. And FreeBee design is all software that sits on top of that hardware. And let's start from the modulator. We introduced two versions of FreeBees. S3B and A3B, where we start with S3B, which is a simpler version. In S3B, beacons are initially transmitted at the reference position, indicated as T in the figure. And we let lear receivers to learn this position. And then we shift beacons between mi minus um, T over 2 to T over 2 from the reference position to embed a symbol or information, where T is the beacon interval. And if you let delta to be the unit of shift, one symbol would worth log 2 t over delta. However, however, this version of freebie requires time synchronization in order to keep track of the reference position, which may not be suitable for mobile environment. Therefore, we introduced um, a freebie, where we shift every other beacons instead. And we use the distance between two consecutive beacons to convey a symbol. This, ha this offers lower symbol rate compared to S3B, but it, no, the learning is not required anymore. I'll move on to the uh, demodulator. Let me first remind you that demodulation in FreeB is equivalent to locating the exact position of the beacon or the timing. Um, however, the sender and, sender and receivers have different wireless technologies, so the rec receiver can only sense RSS without being able to decode the packet. So essentially, the, the beacons are hidden inside RSS samples at the receiver side perspective. So we utilize the beacon, uh, we, we find the beacon location by utilizing the periodicity of beacons as other traffics, suppose, um, like, for instance, data traffics are uh, most likely not periodic. Let me walk you through the demodulation process with, ex with an example. First, receiver samples RSS, and which are quantized according to threshold. And then we use a signal processing called folding um, to statistically determine the position of beacons. This, in this example, we have beacons with an interval four, where we fold with that interval. And the fold sum indicates the column sum. And the column with the peak value or the highest fold sum would indicate the beacon position. Where, where non periodic signals such as theta spread out through the columns. Here now, uh, I'll show you the detection in practice starting with S3B. First, we find the reference position, and then we find the offset from that reference position to find the symbol. In A3B case, we fold by 2t, therefore, we have two peaks, where the distance between two peaks indicates the symbol. So A3B is more practical without time synchronization, but it's slower. To sum up, FreeB is a success when it detects the exact position of beacons and it fails when it does not. Um, in other words, error occurs when the peak column is somewhere other than the actual beacon position. So what are the parameters that affects the error rate? Uh, let's consider the same, ex same example we um, shown in the previous slide. Row is one of the factors that affects the error rate, where it indicates the number of beacons captured in RSS samples, where this is equal to three in this example. By increasing this number to four, we have a higher chance of um, locating the beacon, the exact position of the beacon, which is column two in this example. Hence, we have a lower error rate. 
if you let t be the beacon interval, sample duration equals rho times t. Hence, given the t, given interval t, um, larger sampling duration uh, lowers the sample, uh, the error rate, which is six, uh, which is 16 delta in this example. B is another factor uh, where it is um, channel busy ratio or number of uh, the the ratio of ones in RSS samples. Higher B indicates more ones in this example uh, in, uh, in in this matrix, where it's nine over uh, 16 in this example. If we have high, more number of ones, that means we have a higher chance of having a peak in a column um, elsewhere to the location of the beacon, meaning higher error rate. We have a SCR derivation in the paper, um, which essentially shows the trade-off between bit rate and the reliability. Now we move on to the MAC. Um, Freebie MAC allows many to one or many to many concurrent transmissions. And we term this new scheme as uh, interval multiplexing as, we, as, as it is achieved by selecting appropriate beacon intervals um, to ensure orthogonal channels between uh, freebie signals. Let's see an example where two senders with uh, intervals three and five transmit concurrently. The two signals are merged at the receiver. However, folding the merged signal with an interval, um, interval returns the corresponding beacon position. And uh, at the same time, RSS from the AP of non-interest is evenly distributed among the columns, which avoids simple errors. This is actually holds for arbitrary number of signals when they are pairwise co-primes. So we can have n number of freebie sender sending at, um, at the same time, as long as they have intervals which are co-primes. Another feature of freebie is the cross-technology and cross-channel broadcast, um, where in, uh, an example of cross-technology broadcast is uh, Bluetooth sending concurrently to um, Wi-Fi and Zigbee with the overlapping frequency as indicated as red in the figure. In cross-channel broadcast, Wi-Fi using its wider bandwidth compared to Zigbee can send concurrently um, at the, uh, to the Zigbee operating on different channels which is 14 and 15 in this example. Freebie is prototyped on four different platforms. Uh, we used Warp and uh, Laptop for Wi-Fi, and Mike Z for uh, Zigbee and uh, USB uh, Bluetooth LE dongle. We first test the simple error rate in both indoor and outdoor scenarios, uh, where excess we have sampling duration, and uh, longer the sampling duration, the less the simple error rate. Of course, we have uh, uh, freebie performs better outside due to less noise, where um, the error reaches below 1% at 360 milliseconds in both scenarios. Now we move on to testing interval multiplexing, where we place five uh, Wi-Fi uh, APs uh, named F1 to F5. At first, all the APs operate typically uh, without freebie as a normal AB AP, where freebie is turned on one by one every 10 minutes from F1, starting from F1 to F5. <coughs> Results show the, uh, shows the throughput of F1 as well as the throughput of aggregated for all five APs. As you can see, the throughput of, uh, of F1 is kept, kept stable across the entire experiment, indicating negligible noise between freebie signals, where the aggregate throughput l increases linearly showing the effect of interval multiplexing. So um, how far can freebie reach in terms of throughput? For S freebie, it can reach up to 1.4 kilobps as we talked earlier, while it's uh, only 570 bps for A freebie, where the result is because of a folding, where one fold at T and one fold at with uh, two T. We admit that this um, uh, rate is, is not high, but uh, we note that uh, freebie is for control and the data rate is not the primary design issue. Compared to the state of our eSense um, introduced in Mobicom 09, uh, we achieve up to 4.3 times the throughput. The difference is uh, because of the, um, the modulation where eSense uses very data packet length. 
Moreover, uh, eSense is only defined for one-way communication from Wi-Fi to ZigBee, where FreeBee can um, support four-way communications. And FreeBee supports uh, more than four times the throughput with less than one-fourth of the sampling rate, indicating uh, much higher energy efficiency. Throughputs in other cases are as follows, where the difference is due to different in, um, difference in sampling frequency, unit shift duration, and so on. Now we move on to the mobile and duty cycling um, scenario where the re receivers uh, move at different speeds of walking, running, bicycle, on a bicycle, and in a car of up to 30 miles per hour. In this experiment, a uh, freebie symbol can reliably be delivered to the receiver at the walking speed if the receiver RF is turned on only for 1.5% one, one for one of the time. It increases up to 3% because of the, um, uh, when running because of the increased speed, and 4.5% for bicycle and up to 10% for a car. Uh, here we show the short demo of FreeBee where we control the um, ZigBee-enabled um, LED uh, with a typical laptop equipped with Wi-Fi. Um, here's the setup. Where laptop is the sender um, embedding FreeBee signal in, in, the, in using beacons. Here we just uh, send some um, simple control signal to control the LED. So in summary, wireless coexistence, coexistence brings challenges um, as well as opportunities. Uh, and freebie enables coordination and sharing of the information without the help of gateway. And moreover, all the, all the benefits come, from, come for free with a free side channel design. And free, FreeBee is the first work to establish multi-way communication between Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and ZigBee. And we have a, a couple of work in progress related to FreeBee. Uh, for commercialization effort, uh, we designed low power, ultra low power and cost hardware prototypes, where we have two versions up, to, up until now. Especially the second version released uh, this month uh, has a small form factor, 1.2 centimeters diameter, which can be attached to any object to enable smart operation. Um, this model does not use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or ZigBee module. Instead, it only uses equipped with a low cost and energy RF sampler instead, uh, which can listen to freebie sim symbols from Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or ZigBee. We're also working to enhance our design. Uh, we note that we only use beacons uh, which only in freebie, uh, which only takes less than 3% of the whole Wi-Fi traffic. By exploring data traffic uh, for cross-technology communication, uh, we, uh, which offers significantly increased opportunities, which, is, uh, which, can, uh, which in turn have a higher throughput. We do all this while keeping transparency to existing applications. And thank you. That's the uh, end of my presentation.